Welcome to Bridge the Atlantic. We are your hosts, music web designer Ross Barber. And musician filmmaker Marcia Novelli. This week we're joined by Rod Thomas, aka Bright Light, Bright Light. Rod started his musical career busking on the London Underground, but has since evolved into an artist who combines strong songwriting skills with electronica, and he's caught the attention of many of pop's biggest names, including Erasure, Ellie Goulding, The Pet Shop Boys, and Elton John. Rod was invited on tour with Elton John in 2014, and Elton also performed on his single, I Wish We Were Leaving. We're excited to hear all about Rod's experiences so far, and to see what's next for Bright Light, Bright Light. So, hey Rod, how's it going? Hello. Hey, how are you doing today? I'm good. How are you? I am well. Awesome. Yeah. So we're going to start off the show um, awkwardly, like we like mm-hmm. to do, and ask you three things about yourself that everyone should know. Um, I am male. <laughs> My name is Rod and not Rob. That's actually one amazing thing that everyone seems to get wrong consistently. Really? Even though, yeah, like it's, it's insane and it really drives me out of my mind. Um, and the other thing is that my favourite film is Romy Michelle's High School Reunion. Cool. Quite essential to my sense of humour and my uh, social media presence, I think. <laughs> well, see, I was going to ask you, actually, because um, I've, I've never seen Gremlins, but I did read that Bright Light, Bright Light is a, a Gremlins. It's from reference. Gremlins, yeah. Yeah. So I'm surprised that Gremlins isn't your favourite film. Well... Uh, <laughs> it's test, up test. there, Hello. but it's not my favourite, I think. Like, I, I really love it, but I watch Romy Michelle more. Fair enough. That's fair. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I'll accept that answer. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's okay. Uh, are, are you, like, big into, like, I know that you're big into 90s, because I've scrolled through your Twitter, and, and actually, you mentioned a song that was the first single that I ever bought which is uh, I Belong to You by Gina G. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, so that was the first single I ever bought. I know you're big into 90s. Are you into a lot of 80s stuff as well? Yeah, I think um, the 90s is when I first started buying music. So there's a real kind of like instant connection to a lot of those songs and like long lasting connections. Because when you first engage with something, that moment of like impact is quite long lasting, you know. So like all of those records are very formative. So Björk, Pet Shop Boys, Kate Bush, um, things like Living Joy and, you know, Gina G, Real McCoy, Corona, those kind of things. They were like a, a taster of what the world was like outside where I grew up in rural South Wales. So that kind of decade was really when I was just starting to actively buy music, when I was, you know, like, um, I don't know, I suppose like searching for what I really enjoyed and reference points for for music I wanted to make myself and the 80s I really really love as well but that was probably more passive listening just in my parents car and and that kind of thing so it was later that I went back and discovered a lot of those acts cool because I definitely hear an 80s kind of influence maybe 80s early 90s influence in a lot of stuff I think probably like late 80s to mid 90s crossover is is my um my main love, I suppose, melodically and in, in terms of like what people were doing with sampling and vocal techniques. I think that, you know, like it's not really like decade by decade. Most decades seem to come into the stride around like seven or eight in the years. And then if that kind of hangs over until like the two or three, probably, I'd say. Cool. From my so experience. You, yeah. <laughs> so you started out uh, busking uh, on the London Underground. Um, yes. How how did you find the experience of busking? Because I, I know a few people who have done busking in, in various places. Um, any particularly memorable uh, times or anything that happened? The whole thing was simultaneously non-eventful and really memorable. Because it was, you know, there was no explosive confrontation, which a lot of people thought that you'd get like heckled by people in the, in the tube, especially in London where it's so busy. Um, But I met a lot of really lovely people doing it and a lot of the people that saw me busking still come to my shows today and um, I never I never expected that to happen. It was very um, it was very useful as somebody fairly new to London to feel like there were really good people here, even at their busiest rushing to work. People still took the time to say hello and it really made me feel part of the city that I was living in. So it was really cool. And a good way to test out new material and definitely um, improve your resilience to, you know, not people not really listening and trying to win over people that were passively overhearing stuff and 
you know, it, it was good for confidence and strength of character. The idea that no one really owes you anything, you've got to mm. win them over. And I think that's, I kind of approach uh, artistry in that in, every day, regardless. And I think that's kind of the approach you seem to take. You know, let's win these people yeah. over. Yeah, I think know. so. I mean, I'm not really making music um, with a cynical viewpoint f- to it being like my key to money or success. Right. I started making music because I really loved melodies and I really loved instruments and I liked combining things and, you know, being able to sing really because I really just loved singing when I was a kid. And um, and so it's nice that you do get to perform and to have people listen and to engage with people. And sometimes a lyric that I write gets a really nice reaction from people in a crowd or on the internet. People will reach out and say something which, you know, means a lot more than money that you would earn from it 100 percent. that's what it should be all about that's why you're on the show right now man <laughs> mm-hmm. oh, there you go <laughs> there you go <laughs> so i'm interested um obviously busking is a very different environment to performing on a massive stage like uh i know for sure you performed at the sse hydro in glasgow yes i want to say that you performed at the o2 in london and big venues like that I'm, i may be wrong that might not be the, the right venue i have i haven't done the o2 in london but i a lot of the shows with Elton were extremely large venues. So how did you find the difference? Obviously, it's a huge difference, but... Um, Maybe how do you approach it differently? That's yeah, what I'm curious you, about. Yeah. And if, do you approach it differently as an artist? Yeah, but former? also bear in mind that I was busking in 2006 and it's now 2015. So it's quite, <laughs> right, <laughs> I've had quite a long okay. career. <laughs> yes, um, of course, of course. So, you know, you, you kind of like... Um, over the years, the venues got like slightly more formal and slightly bigger. So it goes from Busky on the Underground to, um, you know, like Hoxton Bar and Kitchen or King Tut's or something like that to like, you know, 200 people. And then the first time you do one of these shows, like an Elton opening slot where the crowd is that big, it's kind of terrifying in a way before you go on. But when you go on, it's actually a little bit easier because there are people there where they aren't necessarily when you're doing your own shows and it's so much easier to play to 10,000 faceless people than it is to play to like 10 people in an empty room. Cause you're, at least you've got like cross looking at you, <laughs> well, you've got somebody to perform to, you know, there's nothing worse than playing to an empty venue. And mm-hmm. a lot of the smaller venues, you know, it, I shouldn't really say it, but like a lot of the people working at like some dingier venues don't want to do their job very well. They don't really care. Um, it's not the case of places like King Tut's or like Hoxton or wherever. They have like really good staff, but you can come across venues in your travels across the world where the staff or like the sound guys particularly aren't on your side. But at the bigger venues, they really are. So you go on stage and you feel comfortable because you can hear everything you need to. And actually, that's like an amazing wow. feeling. I've had sound guys at, you know, a venue in London, like absolutely refuse to help me with the the monitor mix and what it's it's like you know it's one in a one in 20 will right, will right. cause a problem but it's those are the things you remember so when you kind of like do this the larger venues the people there are you know they're i suppose they're looked after better by their infrastructure in the venue and so they're more able to to do what they need to do and what you need them to do so it kind of gets a little bit easier when you get that high up in a strange way so bigger is better I'm not a size queen. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> well, we've kind of touched on uh, your tour with Elton. Um, it's amazing that you were invited on tour with Elton because I know that he mm-hmm. doesn't really, um, he doesn't have many support acts. No. Um, that's phenomenal. So, yeah. How did it all come about? Um, that's what I'm, I'm interested to know. Me too. Well, um, so right back to the start, um, when I was uh, still doing stuff under my own name, I was managed by a lady who then started working for his management company. And so they heard about me through that and we went to the staff party and I was introduced to him. So he said a really quick hello, really nice. And then he kind of like keeps in touch with what people are doing and he's very shrewd and he's very, um, he's very interested in new musicians. He's like, he's a music fan and there aren't that many people who are just simple music fans. Like, living in the music industry these days so he's always like digging out new artists like looking at who's doing what reading reviews reading you know release schedules and stuff 
And so when my first album came out, he read the review and he called me and said that he read the great review and then he called to say that he liked the album. And he does this for lots of people, which no one would really realize. Like he, he knows how much it means to have support from someone in the industry and he knows how much it helps to have advice. So he's one of the few people that will give people, you know, advice and, and their time despite being like one of the busiest people in the world. Um, so we met up and, uh, gradually became good friends I suppose and uh, then I was demoing my second album and I played him some demos and he really liked Wish We Were Leaving so he agreed to sing on it with me which is mental <laughs> and um, and then when I went to record the vocals with him he asked when the album was coming out so I told him and he asked me to go on tour for you know the two weeks around the album release and then when we did those two weeks it went really well with his audiences and the, the the team loved us the crowds loved us so it just went it kept getting extended and it went from 11 shows to 55 oh wow yeah, cool. it was quite <laughs> that quite is crazy. so great yeah it was that is so great it was the most amazing thing that anyone could have done for me and everyone in that whole touring team treated us all like family you know, I would say like royalty, but it's that's not true. They treated us like family, which is much nicer. You know, they yeah. <laughs> they made us feel so welcome and they made us feel so supported, which going back to what I was saying about some of the venues you come across, the support is what really makes doing live stuff exciting and interesting and fun and challenging and rewarding. So to have that level of support from him and from his team is life changing. And it's it's like you can't put into words how much that means really wow it's awesome that's phenomenal honestly it makes me have a new respect for elton john he's uh, amazing. always respected him but I, I just that's a new respect you know yeah i mean it's very easy in the media to focus on like every tiny little word that people say wrong but like no one really gives a shit about the nice things that people do because he's not doing them to get famous or you know yeah, to like, get i mean he is famous ridiculous yeah, no. he's not yeah. he's not doing for, for like column inches one day he'll be, like, be famous the philanthropy i'm doing yeah he's actually giving a shit about people who need care mm -hmm. um because he wants to help and it's so amazing and there are like 30 people like me that he's rung 40 wow. people a year that he's rung to like say your record's great what are you up to like do you want any advice and like who does that no one yeah yeah, that's true. And there should be more of that. I think, you know, there should be more people that have the experience and want to pass it down to, you know, and maybe not a new generation of songwriters, but you know what I mean? Like people that are starting, you know, to do things. And Well, it's like yeah. pass it on. What, what What is it? Not pass it on. Um, pay it forward. Pay it forward. Yeah. I'm sure yeah. you're going to, if you haven't done it already, I'm sure you're going to, you're going to do that at some point, you know, just to remember what he did for you and just keep passing that on and, such yeah. what a positive beautiful thing to do wow yeah. sorry I, I just we don't hear this every day so especially <laughs> a, such a i would say an icon like like yeah. john you know so that's yeah there are, there are a lot of people. a reason he is where he is too you know or he still yeah. is where he is so yes and the reason that he's surrounded by really good people as well mm. is because he treats them well you know like that's that's kind of the key like you see people who are working really hard but not a single person in the team complained and you're like wow that's very oh, very wow. <laughs> yeah. So we gotta ask: Are there any funny stories or any interesting things that you can share <laughs> about being um, on tour with Elton John? Um. Oh God. Or anything well, in general. I really. mean, it's it's a funny one because, like, unless it's something like everyone was so wasted, then it's like it's not really. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. Like, we had a really good time and we watched youtube videos and i bought him a bonnie tyler record like i don't know it, it was very normal because yeah. we were kind of we're friends and we just hung out and like listened to music and were stupid and laughed a lot and and it was amazing but like no one finds that interesting so i don't <laughs> you know, know what though i do i find it interesting because i think that we, we forget that people are people you yeah. know dis despite um where you are in the world, um, you know, you, you're still a person. And I think people forget that. And like you said, everyone wants to focus on the one or two negative things someone's done in their entire career, you know, and people have to remember these, they're real people. <laughs> yeah, know, exactly. That, that are doing, living out their lives in front of, you know, in his case, millions of people, <laughs> you know, and yeah. not just their closest. So, 
That, that's really great to hear. That's really great. What sort of advice would you give to uh, aspiring musicians um, that would love to reach uh, the level of success that you've reached? Just work really hard. There's nothing else you can say. It's like, just work really hard. Like, how else are you going to achieve anything? You know, I went to a friend's school recently um, to give some like career advice and he was trying to get people from lots of different industries to like a, a school where the kids come from a complete range of backgrounds. And I was trying to explain it to kids. It's like, if you want to be a musician or an actor or whatever, you kind of have to think of yourself like maybe a plumber would. So you've got like something you need done right you've got like plumbing work you need done you open up a book and there's like 50 plus how do you choose between a plumber to do the work that you need done how do you separate yourself as like a better plumber or more reliable plumber than another one it's kind of the same thing like how do you show that you're not exactly the same as every other musician how do you show that you have ideas that other people don't how do you show that you have a good work ethic like you just have to think about the things that you want to achieve and how you can maybe achieve them without backing from somebody without a million pounds without being able to tour the world like how can you get to the next point that you want to be at with the means that you have and then hopefully by the time you get there somebody will have like paid a bit of attention so you'll have like a slightly wider reach than you did first time around so you know you've got to you've got to work hard and you have to plan like nothing successful happens as an accident and lasts i don't think even people that think like overnight successes are like this phenomenon of nature like nothing is like that everything has got planning and everything from the moment it starts to work has planning until the moment it fails i love that absolutely yeah and never a truer word spoken no that's that's such phenomenal advice i you know i i do think I, i i was about to say that i do think that there is a level of luck involved but it's not it is luck there is a level of luck but it's also about creating like the best luck possible yeah you know what i mean putting yourself in putting yourself out there in order to help those chance situations and opportunities in in a, in a mix with of course a hell of a lot of hard work trust me <laughs> totally yeah, yeah. That, i mean you know? yeah luck luck is involved but i mean you know you're not if you say luck then people one give up on the chance happening and two mm. presume that like you can just be sitting in a bar in east london and a record company will happen to be on the next table to you yeah. and give you a deal it's like you know yeah. you you have to create opportunities for luck to find you i think yeah that's why i was reluctant to use like the word luck i think it's about uh russ and i often mention this on the on the show i think it's about <sighs> being open creating a, a situ- uh, um, an environment where opportunities um can can happen you know mm. 99% of the time you're pursuing them you know but being open and, and being able to see an opportunity when it's there and yeah. getting on it you know so yeah i'm reluctant to use the word luck but you know what i'm saying. i think you know what i'm yeah, saying yeah i know i know what you mean yeah not so elegantly <laughs> 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 so are you ready for 20 questions yes and just so you know, I have, <laughs> I have, a, I have Twitter and Facebook stalked you to try and tailor these um, to see you. So, uh, to you. Ross is a good yeah. researcher. Okay. Well, we say that until we find out that half the stuff I mention is wrong a lot of the time. So, <laughs> okay, here we go. Coffee or tea? Coffee. Meat or veggies? Veggies. Good, good answer. Makes me happy. CD or vinyl? Vinyl. Twitter or Facebook? Facebook. Brooklyn or London? Brooklyn. Ooh. Yoga or yogurt? Yogurt. Breaking Bad or Orange is the New Black? I've never seen either of them. Are you serious? Yeah. I'm so shocked. You see, like, my horror? <laughs> I know. <laughs> what are you um, watching shit, right now? Shit's Creek. Shit's Creek. I've never... What's, what's, what shows that? Google it immediately. It's amazing. Really? Okay. Yeah, Shit's Creek. It's amazing. All right. So Gizmo or Mogwai? Gizmo. Indie or Major? Oh, I don't know. Um, indie. 80s or 90s? <laughs> 90s. Girls Aloud or the Spice Girls? Spice Girls. Uh, Tori Amos or Kate Bush? Kate Bush. 
You say Amos, eh? I love it. Amos. But that is how it is, though. It's Tori well, Everyone here would say ter- Tori Amos. Amos. Yeah, but you also Amos. say Lemon. It's, what do you say? You lemons? <laughs> what do you say? No, like lem- Lemon. I love it. That's actually I find it amazing in America. So it's like lemon salad, like all these kind of things. So like Christmas. Well, I'm, in, I'm in Toronto here, but it's we're amazing. very Americanized. So. <laughs> Celine Dion or Marilyn Manson? Celine Dion, obviously. obviously. <laughs> I, I know you're Canadian, by the way. I'm just like referencing the, the oh, America. No, no, no. That's why I don't take insult because, I mean, we're North America, honestly, very much similar. <laughs> Steps or S Club 7? Oh, I remember S Club 7. Uh, uh, I hate them both, to be honest. <laughs> oh, it's okay. I'm not really a fan of them either, so I'm not, I'm not offended by this. Um, Sorry. Fa- favorite 90s pop group then? Let's, let's, let's ask yeah, 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 yeah. I want to hear that. Group? Uh, um, oh, Christ. Um, <laughs> Eternal. Oh, Eternal, Eternal okay. Oh, Was that pre- uh, with Louise Redknapp or, or after? Um, pre and post, I'd say. I, so, like, so, I like a lot of Eternal songs. I remember Power of a Woman because I, I remember I got that yeah. free with um, Pepsi had like a giveaway, and like you had to collect like the the things that like, what do they call like the ring pulls from your your cans, mm-hmm. and you would send them away, and you get a CD, and it had uh, I think it was a live version of uh, Power of a Woman or something like that, and I remember really liking that song. What What do you yeah. call the top of the bottle? What did you just call it? Oh, no, no, it wasn't no, it's the bottle, it's like can. Oh, okay, what like do you call that, ring though? A oh, ring, ring pull? pull? I've never heard that what before. What do you call it? Um, what I do don't, you call a it? A tab. A tab? Yeah. <laughs> the tab, or, you know... A tab. A tab. <laughs> That's insane. <laughs> I love it, I love it. I've never heard that before. It. Michael Jackson or Michael Bolton? Michael Jackson. I'm sorry, Ross. R- Ross and the Bolt are like this. You know, We're they tweet each friends, other. Yeah. <laughs> Occasionally. Has he touched you? Dot, 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 there. <laughs> um, oh, I want to think of a pun now. Well, we're hoping to have him on the show, so we'll get back to you on that one. Oh, I just gonna, can't I'm get gonna... over that. I can't get over that song title. It's so astounding. Which one? It really astounds me to this day. Can I touch you? Dot, oh, yeah. dot, dot, there. Oh, there I remember yeah. seeing that as a child and just being like, that's amazing. <laughs> it's so oh. amazing. <laughs> Oh my god. Oh, the bolt. Oh, the he's bolt. So, so awesome. Okay. <laughs> Twerk or work? Work. Ricky Gervais or Ricky Martin? Ricky Martin. Whale or kale? Whale or kale? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, um, whale? Which Do you mean that? to eat or just like as a general concept? Just a general concept. It doesn't, I don't really whale. know. Whales wow. are beautiful, aren't they? They are beautiful creatures. Yes. Bet Midler or the Riddler? Bet Midler, Christ, she's amazing. I was just gonna say, isn't she awesome? She's amazing. Uh, yeah. And the final question to uh, make you feel very <laughs> awkward will be asked by Ross. <laughs> Thanks. Okay, so Ross or Marcio? Boop, boop, boop. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like we've lost him. <laughs> you can just say I Roz. couldn't possibly say it. I, it's like, you... <laughs> I can't answer that question. I'm sorry to do that to you. We're, we're kind of okay. not sorry. We do that to all of you guys. So what are you, what are you listening to lately, man? What's on your, uh, I don't know if you have a, an iPhone or an Android or what's on your, your playlist? Um, It's a little bit out of date because I'm, whenever I'm touring and, writing i don't really tend to listen to new new stuff but mm-hmm. i really love the the latest twin sham uh, eclipse i love the saint lucia record from last year i love um what else i've been listening to loads of pointer sisters like old pointer sisters um and oh i was listening to the new tame and parlor album as well i really like that is that how you say their name? Tame and Parlor? Uh, don't ask us. That's familiar. <laughs> me, me and Matthew, yeah. we don't pronounce anything right. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, it's all um, relative too, right? Uh, <laughs> As I we've learned in this the, episode. Uh, the Twin Shadow album. Yes. Yeah, it's great. V- really very, great. very, very, yes. Um, and yeah, I need to check out the Tame and Parlor one, or however it's pronounced. It's just, um, because I keep hearing him mentioned everywhere. So Yeah, yeah I've, I've seen that name everywhere for this record, so it's doing very well, it seems. And cool. here's a... Here's a Here's a question for you. What's your favorite Bjork album? And I ask this because of what's behind you. Um, it's not what's behind me. I think, I think it's Vespertine. 
Yeah, really, that's a great one. Yeah, it changes a lot, but I think Vespertini is the one that I've listened to and got lost in. Yeah. I, I listen to them all, all the time, and I do really, really love, God, at least the first five of them equally, but Vespertine is the only one that really takes me like out of the world that I'm in right. and puts me in this very insane place. Which like, is the difficult others, it, to find. It's difficult yeah. to find that level. There aren't many there. albums that are that immersive, I don't think. I agree. Um, but that one is is really special, I think. It's an incredible record. Awesome. Cool. And where can people find you online? They can find me on basically like all of my social media all has the handle um, Bright Light X2. So it's Instagram, Facebook, oh, perfect. Twitter, blah, blah, blah. Your, forward your website Bright too, X2. Bright Light X2. That's perfect. Hmm? Yeah, yeah, I noticed that earlier and I was like, this is one of the rare occasions where yeah. someone has all of the things exactly the same. It's just so much easier. Yeah. So, the only yeah. I have all of mine is just my name except for YouTube just because someone had stolen it. <laughs> yeah, But it's, it makes it so much easier. People can just It does, it so yeah. Easier. I mean, it's just like simple and you can yeah. just, yeah. You can use those icons. You don't even have to write them with a forward slash. <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> if you want to know what I've been up to, go to marcionovelli.com or find me on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram as slash marcionovelli. And if you want to know what I'm doing, um, you can find me at electrickiwi.co.uk and I'm at electrickiwi on Twitter as well. Perfect. Where does that name come from, Electric Kiwi? Good question. Oh, it's such a boring answer. Like <laughs> when people ask me this question, I get asked this question almost every day. Um, I really need to think up an interesting story. Just but make the, it up. the reality is, I was 16 and I really wanted a domain name um, because I'd been designing websites for a while. But I couldn't think of anything. I didn't want it to be my name. So I was just looking around the room and putting words together. <laughs> um, and I looked at a plug socket and thought, electric and then i saw a kiwi fruit and was like kiwi and i was like it's really dull it was either going to be frog like sponge or electric kiwi and yeah, I think, electric kiwi uh, i think like electric kiwi wins you know what uh, you're, yeah. you're gonna have to make up a story and rod you're gonna have to make up like a fake elton john story just to tell people so they're like oh my god that really happened you're like yeah sure <laughs> yeah, yeah you should say like happened. you accidentally put a kiwi into an electrical socket Got shocked, spent like three months in the hospital. And, and that's why my hair is like this. Electric Kiwi. <laughs> hey, man, this has just been fantastic. Thanks yeah, so thanks much for, for taking a, Yeah, thanks for coming on the show and taking the time out to chat with us. We really appreciate Hi. it. And uh, all the best of luck to you. Congratulations on all your successes. And uh, please do come back. I will. I'm sure I will. Awesome. If, you, if, if you ask me. We will definitely ask you. <laughs> uh, say hey to Elton for us. Yeah. <laughs> I will. <laughs> Thanks for watching Bridge the Atlantic. If you like what you saw, make sure to like, favorite, and most importantly, subscribe so that you don't miss each week's episode. Click on the videos above us if you'd like to see more. And please feel free to leave us a comment letting us know what you think of the show. Follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. And subscribe to us on iTunes so that you can listen to us on the go. Thanks again for being awesome. And we'll see you on next week's episode. Bye.